Today's episode tells a story of a groundbreaking shift in HIV treatment and understanding. The remarkable journey of you equals you, or undetectable equals untransmissible. In the early 2000s, patients on antiretroviral therapy were successfully maintaining an undetectable viral load. Let's take a moment to talk about what it means to have an undetectable viral load. When someone is living with HIV, the virus is present in their blood. The number of copies of the virus per milliliter of blood is what we call the viral load. Antiretroviral therapy a form of treatment for HIV works by suppressing this viral load. When antiretroviral therapy is successful, it suppresses the viral load to such an extent that the virus can no longer be detected in the blood tests. This is what we refer to as having an undetectable viral load. But undetectable doesn't mean the virus is gone. It just means that the amount of virus in the blood is so low that it can't be measured by the current standard tests. Keeping the viral load undetectable was already a victory in itself. People living with HIV who maintained an undetectable viral load were not transmitting the virus to their partners. This realization was like a light at the end of a long, dark tunnel. This marked a turning point in the battle against HIV and AIDS. And it wasn't long before that the world took notice. The first major endorsement of this newly found hope came in in the form of the Swiss statement in 2008. It publicly acknowledged that an HIV positive individual on antiretroviral therapy with an undetectable viral load and having no other STIs could not transmit the virus to their partners. This was the beginning of a new era in the HIV treatment and prevention. Let's take a step back to 2011 and look at few groundbreaking studies that further cemented the Swiss statement. The HIV Prevention Trials Network, or HPTN, had initiated a groundbreaking clinical trial known as HPTN052. This study was specifically designed to investigate the effects of early antiretroviral treatment in preventing HIV transmission among serodifferent couples. Meaning, one partner was HIV positive and the other HIV negative. The study found that an early initiation of antiretroviral therapy reduced the transmission of HIV by a staggering 96%. It was a groundbreaking discovery that further cemented the idea that effective treatment could prevent transmission. But the medical community needed more data, more evidence. That's where partner study and opposite attract study came into play. The partner study, spanning across 14 European countries with sites in Australia, Brazil and Thailand, sought to provide this evidence. Both studies focused on serodifferent couples and observed thousands of acts of sex without a condom. Across both studies, the findings were consistent. Not a single case of HIV transmission was reported when the HIV positive partner was on antiretroviral therapy and had an undetectable viral load. And this held true regardless of the couple's sexual orientation, providing evidence that undetectable equals untransmissible or you equals you, applied to both heterosexual and homosexual couples. These studies didn't just confirm what was being whispered among scientists, they announced it loud and clear to the world. It was a message of hope and liberation for people living with HIV. Imagine this, you're a woman named Daisy, a vibrant spirit whose life took an unexpected turn when she was diagnosed with HIV. The diagnosis hit her like a thunderstorm, leaving her isolated in a world that seemed to have turned its back on her. She had always dreamt of finding love or sharing her life with a partner, perhaps even having children. But the fear of passing on the virus was so overwhelming that it cast a shadow on her dreams. She chose a life of solitude, 
deliberately deciding not to pursue romantic relationships. This was her reality. She lived, but it was a life filled with depression and feeling of unworthiness, her spirit stifled by her diagnosis. For Daisy, it felt as though HIV had not just infected her body, but it had also stolen her chance at happiness, at love, at a family. Daisy's story, unfortunately, is not unique. It was a silent narrative of many living with HIV, leaving them in a perpetual state of isolation and despair. For people like Daisy, U equals U wasn't just a scientific breakthrough, but a proclamation of hope, a promise of freedom. The fear of transmission was replaced by the confidence to seek relationships, to love and to build a family. Now imagine you're John, diagnosed with HIV in the late 90s. The diagnosis felt like a death sentence, and it also came with a heavy burden of possibly passing on the virus. And then you learn about U equals U, and the fear starts to ebb away. You're no longer a danger to your loved ones. This revolution, U equals U, didn't happen overnight. It had to fight skepticism, denial, even from within the medical community. It was hard for many to accept that people living with HIV could lead a healthy and normal life, that they didn't pose a risk to their loved ones. The turning point came in 2016 when the CDC officially endorsed U equals U. This validation sparked hope worldwide. Fast forwarded to today, U equals U is not just a medical fact, it's a social movement that changes lives, bringing hope and acceptance to people living with HIV. But as we celebrate these incredible strides in HIV treatment and advocacy, our journey is far from over. The story of HIV is not a story that ends, but rather the one that evolves. And as our understanding and treatment of HIV have advanced, so too the challenges we face. As people living with HIV are living longer, we are seeing new issues arise. So how do we ensure a good quality of life as patients age? What does the future of HIV treatment and care look like? This is what we will be exploring in our next episode of Sex Ed Bites. Thanks for tuning in everyone. Please like and share this video and subscribe to our channel. Together, let's build a world where sex education is a human right.